Okay, so at this point, I've shown you how to examine the relationship between two interval-level variables, in this case, beer and GPA, using scatter plots, regressions, and correlations. Um, in this case, we got we have this fake data of these eight people um, with information about how much beer they consume per week and their GPA, uh, and we have a regression equation equal to y equals negative. 0.0787 times x plus 3.3559. This is a bivariate. It's called a bivariate linear regression bivariate because there's two variables, just beers and GPA. You can have multiple independent variables in a regression, many of them actually, but we're not getting into that. How do you, um, first of all, how do you interpret this equation? Well, the, point, the negative 0 0.0787 is the slope. And it means that, in this case, for each additional beer consumed, we predict that GPA will decrease by 0 0.0787. The 3.3559 is the y-intercept. And the y-intercept is equal to the value predicted for y. That's the our prediction for y when x is 0. Because when x is 0, this cancels out, and we're left with only the y-intercept. And you can see that in the graph. The regression hits the y or vertical axis at exactly 3.3559. Okay. Now, in this video we're going to go into a little bit more depth about how to use regression to predict and how to look at the relationship between the line and the different uh, where people are. So we know we see some people are right on the line they're predicted perfectly. Their GPA is predicted perfectly by the number of beers they drink. Other people are quite far off the line. So who are these people? Well, this this um, tri uh, diamond right here affects somebody who drinks two beers per week and has a GPA between 3 and 3.5. Where would that person be? Looks like that's Amy. Mostly work, little play. She drinks two beers per week, and her GPA is 3.2. This person here drinks the exactly the same amount of beer, but their GPA is a lot lower than the regression would predict. Which person is that? Um, their person with GPA uh, also drink two beers a week, but their GPA is only 2.2. .2. That's Dora here. This dot represents Dora. Okay, So you can see some people are right on the line, and other people are way off of the line. Let's get, we can get more precise here by getting a predicted GPA based on the regression equation. We'll create another variable equal to the predicted GPA. Now, as with all formulas in Excel, when you're using them with data tables, we just focus on calculating this for the first row, and then Excel takes care of the rest. So, focusing on that regression equation, it's negative 0 0.0787 multiplied by x, which is the number of beers they consumed, plus the y-intercept, which is 3.3559. Press enter. And now I have the number of predicted, or predicted GPA for each person. Now let's take a look at this should see that the numbers we predicted here, these predicted GPA, these numbers are no, um, sit right on the regression line. So for example, for Dora, okay, she drank two beers per week. Because she drank two beers per week, we predict that her GPA should be roughly 3.2, which is right on the regression line right there. Her actual GPA is only 2.2, so she's down here. Um, take a look at Carl. He has 12, drinks 12 beers per week, and he has a terrible GPA of 1.8. This is Carl right here. The, the regression actually predicts somewhat better GPA, quite a bit better GPA for Carl than he actually has. His GPA predicted is up here on the regression line again. His actual GPA is lower than what we would predict. Okay. We we'll go down here. What about George? George drinks 10 beers per week, 
and his GPA is 3.4. He's up here. He actually has, because he, he does well in school despite uh, drinking a fair amount, his actual GPA is quite a bit higher than what we would predict. We'd predict his GPA to be down here, right here. Anybody who drinks 10 beers a week, their GPA would be predicted to be 2.5689, but his actual GPA is quite a bit higher. Now, if we think about the difference between what we predict and what somebody's actual GPA is, we can formalize this by calculating what's called a residual and create a new variable for that. So the residual is equal to the person's actual GPA minus their predicted GPA. And it gives you a sense of how far away they are from the line. So in some cases, like Amy, remember Amy uh, drank two beers a week, and her GPA was 3.2, and her prediction uh, based on the regression was just about 3.2, so she's right on the line. And there are other people, like George, for example, um, who are way off the line. Okay. The residual gives us a precise sense of how far off the line and in which direction. Okay. I'm going to calculate the residual, which is again based on actual value of their GPA minus what we predict. And here we see that these are actually already sorted from the lowest to the highest. Dora here is almost one full point. Her GP, actual GPA is one full point below what we would expect um, based on her low drinking. She's down here. That's one full point away below the regression line. We come up here to George. George is about 0.83 points above regression line, in other words, above where we would predict, okay? And again, with Amy, we've talked about this, where the residual is going to be very low, almost zero, because the regression line predicts her so well. Her, the dot representing uh, Amy is right on the regression line, or just a sliver away from it. And other people are on various places, but the general idea is the residual, what does it tell you? It tells you basically how good the prediction is for that particular person, how far away they are, and that can come in quite handy as we'll see going forward.